Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm covering all the, let's say, prominent Toz ammos that we can uh, use in the game. Starting pretty much, I pretty much go across the board. I test five of the ammos on armor and then five, uh, two of the ammos on helmets. And then I give my results. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So same as last time I was testing with the shotgun ammo, um, we're going to go with a class 2, 3, 4, and 5 armor. Make sure everyone's at full health and the shots will be at close range to make sure they hit in the chest. All uh, ammunition doesn't take any like drop-off damage over distance, so distance doesn't play any part in it. And uh, yeah, so with the pack armor, this guy just fucking decided it was a good idea to move, but it didn't affect it. It still hit him in the chest. Uh, this one, it did drop him in three shots. Uh, you're going to find a very common pattern, I think, over the the, armor, uh, the ammunition. Uh, this is a buckshot round as well. So with this one, the 6B23 took seven shots to drop him, um, which is pretty much a very common theme with the, uh, with the 6B23 armors. Now we move over to the 6B13, and this one actually only took six shots to drop him. Now without going into the conclusion straight away, there's a big difference between buckshot and slug around in the game when it comes to armor damage. So when you're shooting someone with a buckshot, there's more pellets hitting, and each of those pellets do armor damage. Whereas when you're hitting with the slug, it's only the one shot that is actually hitting, and therefore it can only do so much armor damage at a time. Now with the 7.3 millimeter buckshot round, they have nine projectiles, whereas most of the other ones are only eight. And so that's why I tested the 7.3, because of the 9 projectiles. Now, when it came to the Gen 4 Assault Armor, we actually dropped this one in 8 rounds, which was quite surprising because of the fact that it was actually a higher class armor. But to my understanding, it's coming down to the fact that the armor is getting destroyed because of so many pellets hitting it. Now, after I do all these shots, uh, I go through, check all the armors, check the durabilities, make sure, like, or see where the armor durabilities are at. Uh, the pack packer was the only one that actually didn't have a large amount of damage because of the fact that the ammunition was able to pen through it and kill the person first, whereas the other armors were actually all destroyed with this one. Now we are moving over to the 7.5 millimeter buckshot. Now this one has two more actual damage, flesh damage, uh, but one more armor damage as well. However, it has one less uh, pen, uh, sorry, one less projectile. So to my understanding, I thought it would be very similar, and uh, we'll get into the results now. Now the packer was pretty much what he expected, the exact same as the 7.3 coming in at three shots to be able to drop the person. Um, it's coming down to that uh, penetration value on the packer so it's able to get through it and therefore that's why it can drop it. Whereas as we move over to the 6B23, it takes a total of seven shots to be able to actually get through the armor so we can actually start doing damage. So that's the reason why it's taken so many shots is the actual pellets have to do so much damage to be able to drop the person. Now this comes same with the 6B13 with all those pellets hitting. It's all coming down to how many shots to be able to actually destroy the armor and then be able to do the damage to the actual person themselves. And this one comes in as seven shots as well. Now as we move into the Gen 4 Assault armor, I do get interrupted here by a scav, but I was ensured, like reassured that uh, they weren't damaged at all by the scav. But um, it came in at a total of nine shots. Now, the difference between the 7.3 and the 7.5 was that one shot. My understanding is coming down to those pellets again. What I'm actually thinking is happening is the amount of armor durability on the armor, being the, you know, this Gen 4 Assault has, I think, 65. So it's taking, each of those pellets is taking one or two, you know, durability off until the armor is destroyed. And then there's a, it's low enough to be able to actually destroy the, uh, the body behind it. So that's what my theory is what's happening with the buckshot. Um, because there's not a high enough pan to be able to get through it. Now we are going to move over to the Poliva 6U. Now with this round, it has the highest pen power out of all the rounds for the Toz. It is a slug round, so there's only the one projectile. Um, its damage is a little bit lower than some of the other slugs, and uh, its armor damage is sitting up there pretty high at 40. But to be honest, I'm not really sure where that sits in all the variables of you know how much damage it actually does to armor. So coming up first with the uh, packer, it drops down in two, no big deal there. Next we have the 6B23 armor. Now with this one, it does take a few shots, it goes down in six shots. So uh, to my understanding, it was enough damage to get through uh, a portion of the, uh, destroy the armor to a certain portion, and then the pen could kick in and be able to drop the person. 
Now up to the 1613. Um, I don't know why they got spasming on the ground there. But uh, yeah, so there's a lot of shots to get through this one. Now this is obviously a class 4 armor. And uh, it takes a few hits. So a total of 10 hits to be able to drop this guy. And I think it comes down to the same thing with the slug hitting it, doing a little bit of damage uh, to the point where it's damaged enough so it can actually pen through it. Now up to the Gen 4 Assault. So with this one, takes a lot of hits. Uh, we're looking at the fact that it's a class 5 armor. It, I'm using a slug round. It's got to get through enough of the armor damage or do enough armor damage to the point where it's low enough to be able to pen through. And this one takes a total of 16 rounds. So it's not even possible to drop someone. Like They could walk up to you with their hatchet and drop you in the time that you could even... I don't know, maneuver around enough to hit him 16 times in the chest. So, anyway, 16 rounds, Paluva, highest pen for the uh, slugs on the Toz. So, I just want to point out here, as you can see, the actual durability on all the armors here. They're not actually blacked out like the with the black shots. They're actually getting down to a certain point where the ammunition is able to get through, and then it's killing the person that way. Now, moving over to the star rounds. Now, this has two more armor damage, one less pen, and I think about... 15 more actual flesh damage so to my understanding it should do some sort of difference i'm not really sure what it was going to be but we end up finding out so with the uh, packer there was three shots to drop the packer coming over to the uh, 6b23 which is your class 3 armor that one was a total of six shots same as the believer 6u moving on to the 6b13 that one was a total of 10 shots exactly the same as the um the Paluva as well however uh, i did get interrupted by a scav but we sorted that one out once again they did said that there wasn't any hits to them they're scavs are just really keen on shooting me i guess um and then we move on to the gen 4 assault now this one uh it was slightly better than the Paluva 6u and i'm trying to figure out the exact reason it could be to do with uh the armor damage side of things it could be to do more with the fact that i don't like critical shots from the the ricochet chant i'm not going to get into the math of that it's very small but it is possible but it could have been end up if i redid the test it might have been 16 as well so um, the variables might be a little bit different in that but i'm not totally sure on it so same with the other armors uh when i checked them after doing all the damages and finishing everyone off uh majority of the armors are around 50 percent uh durability because that's how far the durability need to go down to uh, be able to kill someone. Something I, I really point out, and people ask me, when do I stop using an armor? I try and replace armors around the 50% mark. Um, just take that as a tip, because generally once they get to about 50% they're, they're, of the durability, they start to become a lot less effective. So next up, we have the Devastator round. Now, I specifically got this one because it has a very low pen and one projectile, so it's a slug, but his damage is insane. With the Packer, it dropped it down in three shots, so, which is pretty much a common across the board. Everything except for the Poliva uh, did it in three. And then when it came to the 6B23 armor, this one took a whopping 11 shots to get through. So, it was more the blunt side damage that was actually getting the, you know, to kill the person. Other than the armor, or sorry, the round penetrating through the armor and killing the person. It was just the, the, the damage over time was enough to slowly kill them off. Uh, now, with the... Next one we kill is the Gen 4 Assault. I skipped the 6B13 for a little special one at the end. So with the Gen 4 Assault, uh, it was 10 shots. So it's the same thing again. That It's just slowly getting through the uh, armor a little bit. But really it's just slowly killing off the person behind the armor. Now with the Devastator round, with this one I specifically wanted to see how quickly you could drop someone in the leg. Now with it being 188 damage... Um, it should take around three shots, and it did. So, three shots to the leg, killed him, and uh, it was much faster than trying to kill him with if he had armor on. So, maybe that would be the better tactic with the Tods. So, moving on to helmets. Now, like the uh, shotguns, I just do the face shields. So, we've got the ZSH, the LSHZ, the Alton, and the Killer Helmet. So, we've got a class 3, 4, 5, and 6. I do my test shot to make sure I'm shooting in the right spot. And I start off with the uh, 7.3 buckshot. So I am just at the bottom of the, the rip, and that's enough to get all the pellets to hit the face shield. And then when it comes to the ZSH, this one drops in a total of five shots, which is pretty much, I don't know. It's all right, I guess. We'll leave it at that. We'll move on to the next one, being the LSHZ. So... 
the reason why I picked these helmets oh, picked these helmets is pretty much I didn't think there'd be much point going through like a kiver or a, a whole pack. Um, but these are the ones you're gonna be mostly facing with the tolls and going like holy shit, I'm in trouble. So with the LSHZ, that one was a total of six shots. Um, you're gonna see a very common pattern with the buckshot. We have the Alter next. With this one, it is a total of six shots. So we, you, you, you're seeing what's happening. The pellets are hitting the helmet. It's destroying the face shield. And then you are able to get through and kill the person behind it. When it comes to the killer helmet, uh, it's it's pretty much the exact same thing. Shooting at the bottom of the brim to make sure all of them hit the face shield. Because if they didn't have a face shield, you'd be going for the face hitbox. And uh, the killer helmet as well, as well is a total of six shots. Now, after I kill... All these players, I go by, I check, make sure all the face shields are uh, only being hit. The helmet wasn't hit at all, which for all my tests, the it was only ever the actual helmets. Sorry, there was only ever the actual face shields that got hit, which was uh, perfect. That's what we wanted. Uh, as well as that, um, nearly every single one of them had the face shields totally zeroed out, which was uh, an interesting thing to notice because that way um, you could tell that the buckshots are actually destroying face shields. So... When you're comparing these to the armor, well, at least with the buckshot, you could pretty much say as long as they can get per five perfect shots on their helmets, they're dead, or, or five or six. So it's it's an option you've got. Uh, you can see how beautiful this helmet looks with the uh, face shield covered up. But yeah, that's the um, that's the whole thing. The face shields get destroyed, and then once the face shields are destroyed, you can kill the person behind it because the armor class is so high, it stops all the damage completely. So last but not least, we have the Poliva 6U going into face shields, and we start off with the ZSH. Now, this one, total of five shots, and um, that's the highest pan ammo for the Toz. So I don't really know exactly what the deal is here. If, if that's going to be the highest pan ammo, and it takes six, six shots to get through a Poliva 6U, and it's a slug, you guys are already going to be in for a treat when it takes, say, 11 shots to get through the LSHZ, which is what happened. And uh, it's, it gets pretty crazy like this. So what's going to happen here is you're just going to see a massive montage of pretty much me shooting a gazillion rounds into helmets to be able to drop people. Because after we get finally get through the LSHZ, we move on to the Alton. And that one takes a total of 17 shots to be able to drop. And after further investigation, it's what is happening is those 17 shots do one durability each to the actual face shield. And it slowly drops it down to the point where the face shield's destroyed enough that the Poliva 6U can actually pan through and then destroy, they'll kill the person behind it. So with the Alton, it goes a total of 17 shots to get that durability low enough. And then once we get over to the killer helmet, it's the exact same case. We're doing, shooting a total of 16 shots into the killer helmet. Once we get the killer helmet destroyed enough, that's enough to be able to kill the person behind it. Um, and each time, my theory is each time, they're probably taking one to two health points worth of damage, possibly three. And uh, so you could see like, if you've got 35 health on your head, if they're taking two to three sh uh, damage per shot, that's enough to get to the point where they're dead because after 18 shots, they're dead anyway. So I think that's kind of what's happening. It could be just the fact that they're taking one to two damage each time that's killing them. All the durability of the helmet's so low now that they can finally get through. It's probably it's probably a mixture of both, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. There was a massive question with the, uh, the 50 cal rounds with the shotgun ammo, um, the BMG 50 is whatever they're called. And after doing some investigation, I'm not going to make a whole video just on one round, but uh, the, the question came up so many times. But it is, it's pretty much smack bang between the Poliva 6U uh, for, the, for the 12 gauge and the AP20. So the Poliva 6U on the, on the 12 gauge was really, really bad. And the, um, the AP20 was the best. Well, technically the best. The Fachettis were the best, in my opinion, uh, depending on your range. So... It's because it's a mixture between the two. I would say it's, it's sitting somewhere dead in the middle, probably somewhere on the more shitter side, the Poliva 6U, because the Poliva 6U was absolutely trash. I think it's probably leaning more towards that side than it would the AP20 side. Um, but that's to answer that question, because that one came up a hell of a lot of times. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, it's it's an interesting thing every time I do these videos for me to like learn more about how 
like ballistics work in this game. There's a lot of math behind it. Um, Veritas is all over that shit. But to me, it's just, I'm, I'm more of a hands-on kind of person. Let's go shoot some stuff and find out what the result is. So hopefully you like this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I am trying to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of the year. And thanks for your help. We are smashing that, uh, smashing towards that goal. So if you're not already subscribed, feel free to chuck a sub down. It doesn't cost you a cent. Help support the channel. I want to get that plaque. Uh, at the end of the year. I do live stream on Twitch every day of the week, so go down the link below, give me a follow over there. If you ever have any Tarkov questions, you can hit me up on my live stream or you can ask them down in the comments below. Help each other out if you can answer other people's questions. It's always helpful. And lastly, I'll see you next time. Three blind mice, three blind mice. I don't even know the rest of the words, so three blind mice.